Hello and welcome to another video. Today I am super proud. This took me a long time, but now I can finally present you a solution to get Rivet and Chatbot UI online very quickly, very easily. I think anyone can do this and we are also using free accounts. So this is really cool. And it's even easier to, to manage and to, to work with than the previous solution. So only thing you will need is you need, of course, a railway account because we are hosting this on railway, but they have a free account. You need a GitHub account because it will be copying some of my code to your account. And we need a Superbase account, but we will see that in a second. Also, this link, of course, is in down below in the description. And there is also some more installation instructions down here. So, but basically we will cover this now. So let's get going. If you use this, you just press this big deploy now button here. And now you can see that we need to make some settings. First is Rivet Chat API. So that is basically my small application that will be running your graphs, your Rivet projects, and um, make it available, uh, an API available so that our chatbot UI can talk with the graphs. Let's press configure. So first thing is it wants us to uh, give a name for our repository. So it will copy my repository here into your. As I have now the same account, it, it is an error because I cannot name it the same, but basically you can probably keep the name and just na or name it anything you want. And you can also check this private repository. There is no uh, reason to make it public to anyone. Then you will add your OpenAIT here. So something like SK, whatever. I will just add some dummy values now. I already installed the project. But basically add it here. This is the one that Rivet will use. Even if you are not planning to use OpenAI in Rivet and use some other API or something, add it because I think Rivet will refuse to run otherwise. So if we have this, we press save config. And one more note, there's also some more variables down here, but just don't touch them. Some of them are really crucial to stay as they are. Then second thing is the file browser. So we have a file browser with an interface to be able to upload our and uh, delete or change our Rivet files. So if you want a new uh, additional Rivet file online, we can just use a simple file browser in our web in, with a web UI. You will see this in a sec. And for that, we will need a username and a password. So I don't know, you can type anything you want. We could do admin and now, I don't know. Of course, you should put a, probably put a proper password here, but I will just add something now. Once you've done that, press save config. Now, third thing is chatbot UI, our beautiful chat interface. We also need to uh, um, take a special version of chatbot UI here that I created so that we can make the installation simpler. Press configure here. And now the same, it wants to clone my GitHub repository. And again, enter any name, enter this. And now you can see we have to add a bit more information. And I always wrote down how to get it and where to get it. But I will show you now. So what we need for this is a Superbase account. So you need to go to superbase.com and register for a free account. Once you're aware there, you will probably be automatically guided to create a new project. Let's do this now here. So we create a new project. We call it whatever we want, chatbot UI. And then first thing is, it is already generating, um, is, uh, you can already set a database password. You can either um, enter one or you can generate one. Now you can already copy this value here. You can also retrieve it later, but maybe you already copy it now. Go back and there is Superbase database password down here and paste that in. I mean, I will not paste in the real value now. We are just doing it for fun. Then you press create new project. And yeah, this will might now take a while, but yeah, first of all, we can still copy some settings from here. Later, you can um, get them at other points in the project, but we already have something here we can copy. So one of those things is this unknown public key. You can copy it, press here, and then there is unknown key is somewhere here, here. So I will not enter the real values because I don't want to share them, but let's put something in. And then you can also press reveal here and copy to get the secret key. This is going to, uh, no, it's, sorry, it's a service role key. This is here. So, and at the moment, um, we still need to wait a bit 
to the for the project to fully set up. Uh, actually, we can already copy this project URL as well. So let's grab that and add it here. So I can add that. That's not too critical. And yeah, now it created the project. So if you want to access the settings now, I will show you again. So you can go down here to project settings. And now here on the main page, you get the reference ID. Again, we press copy. We go here and there is the reference ID field. Then the other uh, values are from API. So this is the ones we already added. There's the URL, the project URL we already added, this unknown key and the service role key. You can get them here even if the project is already created. So, and what else were we missing? We are missing the database. So click on database. And now, first of all, you could set a new password here, reset the password and, and get it again to copy the password. Um, but we already added the password from the start. And now we can copy the link from here, the password, the link. Do not replace anything in here like the password. Just copy it as it is. This will be automatically handled. Basically, we do this. And now there's one more thing. And I put a link here because it's not that easy to find because it's outside of the project settings. You have to go to this page here and you have to create an access token. So you press on generate new token, give it any name. And once you press here, you will be getting shown a token and you can copy that as well. And this token goes here. Okay, then you press save config if you have everything. And after that, you press deploy. So if you're wondering again where you get those values from, I really try to make it clear here. So super base, then go to your project, then project settings, API, and so on. So I try to make it as descriptive as possible, those fields here, that this will hopefully not be an issue. Because it's really important that all those are correct. Otherwise, the application will not be running correctly. And maybe a short word. So what is super base? Basically, it's a it's like a foundation. This chatbot UI sets um, is being set up with a database, with security, with user management, lots of things that uh, yeah, uh, the project does not have to, to recreate. Okay, now we have configured everything. So if everything is green and ready to be deployed, you will press the deploy button. I will not do that now because the values I put in don't make any sense and I already have it deployed. So what will happen is basically, that you will get to a page like this. And for your case, there will already, first of all, not, not be a green check mark yet, but there will be like uh, building and deploying and some timers. Um, so you just need to wait a few minutes for everything to be done. Hopefully after at least like, I don't know, five to 10 minutes, everything will have this green check mark and be running. Then um, to use this, the first thing we need to do is we need to add a rivet file. And this file needs to be a bit specific. So basically, um, what you need is you need a graph input like this. It needs to have the ID input. It needs to be called chat message. And this array uh, check marks here needs to be ticked. This is very important so that the messages can flow into your graph. Second important thing is this chat here must, have, must be renamed output so that our um, application knows what chat node should output should be streamed. You can also rename multiple chats output if you want them all streamed or if you have maybe a, a different path, sometimes goes to this chat, sometimes to this. And this should also work with other chat nodes from, uh, I don't know, from Olama or something. Although I'm not sure you will use it as we're in the cloud here. But this is very important. And one more thing, if you want to add your own system prompt like here, we need to add one thing in between. We need to do a pop note here. And we need to pop from front and put this in between and move, remove the first message and put the rest in here. Why do we do that? Because Chatbot UI also has the option to set a system prompt and is always sending one. So this ensures that the system prompt from Chatbot UI will be removed and this um, will then be added here. If you do not use the system prompt and you want the one from Chatbot UI, 
then you could do it like this. I will of course uh, give you both example graphs for both cases so you can um, yeah you can download them and, and use them as a starting point. Don't worry about it. But for now we're going back and the first thing we do we are going to the file browser and now we are clicking on this link here. This is the public link to access it. Let's click it and if you do this for the first time, you would first see a login screen. And on the login screen, you would add the, the user and the password you entered before. If you ever forget this, you can also go to variables here. And here you can see them. Or you can also edit them. So just log in. And then you would not see any files here because there is not one. But you could just press the upload button here or drag and drop a file to, uh, to get your project online. Remember the name, that's important to use. We need that. So remember how you named the file. So example.rivets-project in this case. Now, last step, then we are done. We're going to chatbot UI. And again, we are pressing this link here. And if you do this for the first time, after pressing start chatting, there will be a registration. On this page, enter an email and the password and press register. You will be sent an email to your email address with a verification link you need to um, yeah, to, to click once. And then you can come back and log in. And one note, this link will not be correct. This is something I will show you later how you can set it. But it, it's a minor thing. It, it will still work. You just go back to the online link. You can just press this again and you should be able to log in. So let's do that. So now we are in Chatbot UI. And the first thing in here we will do is we will go to this models link here or icon here. Press it and add a new model. And now for this data, you just I show you from your example here already added. You can add any name, whatever you want to call it. That is just what it's going to be shown in the front end. Then for the model, you need to add your graph name. So example dot rivet search project here because this is what our file here is. And if you add a new file, you can just add a new model with this model ID and access that file immediately. The base URL is always the same. So in this case, it's important that it's HTTP, not HTTPS, because it's an internal link that doesn't have any SSL certificate and the port needs to be here. So this is a static link. And then as this, this is internal communication, you do not need an API key. So basically the chat and the, my other application are talking and not um, yeah, talking in the internal network with each other and not via the internet. After that, you press save. Once you have done that, you can just go to chat, have a new chat and up here, select a model and choose your custom model. And then can, you can say, I don't know, whatever, talk with it. Yeah, now we see, hello, I'm ChatGPT, a friendly AI assistant here to help you, but there's something special about me today. I'm running inside a rivet graph. Nice. Yeah, and basically that's it. Now, uh, yeah, you can upload as much files as you want. Just create a new model for them and you can talk to them. Just remember, you need to prepare the files. And I actually, I'm sorry, I forgot one super important thing. You also need to go to project here and select the main graph. Because in this one, it would not matter, but you could have lots of graphs. You could have lots of subgraphs. You know, let's imagine you have like 20 graphs in here. Somehow my uh, backend, my application needs to know what is the graph that needs to start this thing. And that's why you need to set this. So sorry for <laughs> forgetting about that earlier, but this is super important to, to save. And if you run into any trouble, you can also go to the application and you can go to the Rivet Chat API. Let's see, you edit the model and it's not working. You can go here and then you can press on view logs here. And then there's deploy logs and you can see here what's happening. And maybe you will see an arrow here from Rivet. Like, um, for example, if we did not select the main graph, then it will tell us here that we did not do that. Or maybe your graph fails because of another error. You can see those messages here if there's something wrong with it. 
most likely we see it at least. So that is one method you can actually see if there's something wrong. Okay, then a bit more bonus information, but very short. As I said, I think super base is pretty cool because it, it, it allows us to do more things. For example, um, if we are in the project now, we can go to authentication and we can check this off here and basically we can make it so that new users can no more re-register. Let's say you edit your account and you want it to be safe because it's online. No one should be able to chat with your rabbit scraps but you. Just press this button or deactivate this and press save down here. And now, if, uh, sorry, yeah, that was the lockout button, yeah. Now, if we try to uh, register here, let's try to do that. Dot now, sign up. Then, yeah, we are just getting the notification that signups are not allowed for this instance. So, this is cool, right? So, we, we you can already make it safe. And another short thing I want to show you is if we go to authentication here in the general settings, not the project settings, it's a bit confusing that this is two times here, you can go to email template and now you can edit your confer this email verif verif verification email you just got. You can change the content, you can change what's in there, you have some placeholders and you can also change the URL. And I already did that. Normally, you have the localhost URL in here, but if you want this link to be actually working, you need to copy the link from your UI, this one here. This is the link you need. So basically, you can also find it in settings here somewhere there. The public networking link here, also a copy button here. You need to take that and put it in here. And yeah, sorry, also put HTTPS in front of it. So, and then you can save this. And yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, I will try to update all the information about it, um, put everything you need below in the video. Uh, I will also be updating my GitHub. So in the future, there will be two kinds of graphs, graphs that you can run with Rivet alone and graphs that you will run with this setup so that we have different templates from them in different folders and you can easily find them. And yeah, I hope you have fun. Uh, this project will for sure be extended in the future. There is still so much that can be done. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. As always, please like and subscribe and yeah, comment also. Um, and see you. Bye.